Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I've done a starter makeup kit kind of video back in 2014, I think late 2014 or early 2015. I honestly can't remember but I will be sure to link it down below because it is a walk down memory lane. I believe that everything I used back then is totally different from the products I am using at the moment. I did switch out some products and I'm now using a lot more creams because I like the way they sit on my face. I don't really tend to use powders as much because they tend to cling to really dry areas, being like my cheeks and my chin. Everything I've got in front of me is a mix of a drugstore and high-end. I am no dermatologist or beauty expert. Everything I'm using today is stuff I've tried and tested out myself and the things I will be mentioning might or might not work for you so just please keep that in mind and don't give me any shit if a certain product makes you break out and vice versa. So I'm basically going to do this in the order in which I would apply stuff onto my face. I don't really use everything on a daily basis. I don't wear makeup on a daily basis just if I feel like it. I'm pretty content with the way my skin is and I think as I've grown older, I have definitely appreciated what I've been given. So yeah, just just a little, just a little disclaimer there. The first product I'm going to mention is this Umbriolis La Creme Concentrate. I don't speak French, so don't don't give me shit for butchering that. It's basically a Primary moisturizer and I typically use this prior to applying makeup or if I'm in a cold country because this is definitely a bit thick at least compared to the moisturizer I have been using as of late but this does feel quite thick in the tube but comes out a bit milkier once you do squeeze it out a lot means milk and French, so therefore there it is already given that it's going to be a bit of a milky consistency. The only downside to it is that it does have a scent, but this product is said to be for all skin types. It is dermatologically tested, so it most probably won't break you out. You can pick this up in any French pharmacy or I believe online. I stopped wearing foundation. Um, I'd say two or three years ago just because I don't need it. I would only wear foundation if I did have like a performance or wanted to like even out any redness but my skin's been pretty good and I've got pretty good jeans so I don't really typically need it. Like the only time I will use concealer is if my eye bags look really bad or if I'm breaking out or look really tired. Item number three, this is the Glossier Stretch Concealer in the shade Light Clear 10. I believe there are only four shades when I picked this up, but there are 12 shades now, and I think if you do compare it to everything, this would be either G11 or G12. So I do use the light one, but it looks like this. And what I love about this concealer is that it's very malleable in terms of its texture. It feels very balmy and it's definitely the nicest concealer I've ever used just because it is easy to blend into the skin and it looks very natural, which is always a plus because I'm not really a huge fan of high coverage products. I like it when my makeup looks really natural. So I tend to just use this around my nose because I get red here or under my eyes if my eyebrows are really bad. But you can use this all over the face just to be sure to blend it out with a damp sponge. The powder is a product that I only use if it's really hot or if I am wearing a lot of makeup on my face. I used to swear by the Rimmel London Stay Matte Powder but that has looked so dry. I switched out to this NYC Smooth Skin Loose Face Powder in the shade 7418. It's just a translucent powder. I typically just use this powder if I want to set my face. The wonderful thing about it is that 
it sets the pace without making you look too mad. I'm pretty pale as you can see on the camera, it's really sad because I do live in a tropical country. But I use this Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer. <gasps> I just dropped it. I use this in the shade Baked. And this is the only cream bronzer I've ever tried. I used to use the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. But it is a powder, so I switched out to this. This is a very blendable product. It's easy to use. Like you literally just have to like swipe it onto your cheeks, like wherever you want to contour or bronze, and then blend it out using a brush or a sponge. And this also comes in the shade Blazed, which is darker. I just use this because I am pale and don't really get tan anymore. Blush has always been a hit or miss product for me because I get really red easily and I end up looking like Raggedy Ann if I do have too much blush on but I recently picked up this Sunny's Face Air Blush in the shade Moon. It's a cheek tint and I also like using this on my eyes and lips. I feel like I want my look to be very monochrome. It looks like this. I will swatch it onto my arm for you just so you can see what it looks like on me. It looks like this. It's a cream blush but it does dry down to a powder which is nice because you don't have to set it. Sunny's face has a total of 6 air blushes but I picked up this one because I really like the way it looked on my pale skin. For a highlighter, I've got two to show you. One is from the drugstore and another one is a high-end product. This one is from Colourpop. It's also another recent purchase. And this is the Light Sticks in the shade Bullseye. It's very reminiscent of their Super Shop Cheek in the shade Lunch... I think Lunch Money, which is one of my favorites. But I honestly prefer the Light Sticks. Like you can't really see it, but it looks like it's this one over here. The thing I love about this product is that it's a cream. So it is easy to blend and although it is similar to the Super Shop Cheek highlighter in terms of its consistency, this one comes in more products so it's definitely worth the money. There are like a total of 8 shades to choose from but I've got this one, the shade, I think it's called Star Bright which is very reminiscent to Flexitarian and then Flying High, which is reminiscent of Over the Moon. But I wouldn't recommend the third one because it just comes out very glittery. You don't really see much on your face. Like You have to build up the product in order for it to be seen. And the next one is the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Face Style Highlighter Duo in the shade Mean Money Slash Hustle Baby. Fenty is honestly killing the makeup game and like that is a high-end brand I can swear by because their products are just great. It looks like this. This one is the shade Hustle Baby. It's quite similar to the Super Shop Cheek Highlighter in Wisp. And then this one is a paler pink called Mean Money. I use these together just because I like the way they look when used in tandem. You can definitely use them on their own, but I would recommend using them together just because of the way they look on the face. For the eyebrows, which is definitely a crucial step, brows frame the face and you can't really fill your brows in the way other people do because everyone's brows aren't the same. Like this one, like for me, this one is a lot longer than this one and I find that I don't really have to apply too much product because this one's, a lot, this one's definitely fuller. Like everyone's got one good brow and then the other one's just like meh. I've got two just because there are times when I want my brows to look a bit fuller and more pigmented and then other times I want my brows to look very bushy. Sometimes I do like a natural brow and then other times I will want a bit more product in there. For like days when I can't be bothered to have anything on my brows, I will use this Colourpop. Brow Boss Gel, this is the clear version. I think they have like a couple more tinted ones. This one is very similar to Glossier White Brow, but I prefer it because it does hold the brow moves into place. It doesn't leave them feeling crispy or crunchy. I've also got the Milk Makeup Cush Fiber Brow Gel in the shade Grind. 
This one, like milk makeup products are vegan and given that they are vegan, they cannot use any animal products. Milk makeup uses cannabis oil or CBD oil as a binder as opposed to beeswax, which is a more common component in the makeup products. I ended up picking up the shade kind because it's very, like it's dark as you can see. And I have naturally dark eyebrows so I wanted something that would match the hairs. But this is great, I just can't be bothered to use it sometimes because too much product can come out at once, you just have to be careful. And I feel like this will be easier to use once the product has dried up a bit. For the eyes, this is the Colourpop Super Shock Shadow in the shade Sidekick. It's a very bright coppery orange color. It looks like this. I will swatch it on my arm just so you can see how pretty and vibrant the color is. It's unlike any eyeshadow my own and honestly Colourpop products are unlike any other, especially the shadows because the formula is so unique and there are so many colors to choose from. I am totally obsessed with this one because it just adds that oomph of color onto your face. I used to be so afraid of applying non-neutral shades on my eyes because my eyelids are very small. I have monolids and if I do apply something too dark and drastic, chances are I will look like I've got a black eye, which isn't ideal. I don't want to look like I've got a black eye. but. I love using this, it's so easy to use and blend and that's just the best because I don't have to use a brush, Like I can just use my fingers and be done with it. For mascara, I have been using this Milk Makeup Crush mascara for a while. A lot of people love this, it's become an instant cult favorite. I personally am not the biggest fan of it, I'm just using it up because I don't want to waste the product. The brush is shaped like a pine tree which is very interesting. I've never seen a mascara wand like this, but the mascara itself is just... I don't think it's the best formulation for Asians just because their eyelashes are so fine and they tend to grow downwards, which really sucks. I wanted to like it, but it's just an okay product. I will recommend the Fairy Drops Scandal Cream Mascara though, like, that's a really great product. And then for the lips, I've only got two products to show you because I've been using the same stuff. This is the Glossier Manglebomb.com. I've also got it on birthday, but this is the one I've been using quite a bit because it's tinted. I have pretty pink lips naturally, but this one, it just turns up the pink a bit because it is tinted. And then this one is the Sunny's Face Fluff Matte in the shade Baked. There nine colors in total but I gravitated towards this one because I like the color. I've always been into like a reddish lipsticks just because I find that they suit my skin tone the best. These lipsticks are so pigmented. Like, although this is a lipstick, I tend to also use this on my eyes and cheeks if I want a monochrome look. It's a really pretty color and you can either shade it out or build it up to whatever intensity you want really. And then last but not least, I got five makeup tools to show you. Like I've only got one face so I don't really find it necessary to have a ton of makeup brushes. I know some people who do but I just find it completely unnecessary. This is a Shui Moore eyelash curler and I've had it for about six or seven years. One of my mom's sisters gave this to me one time and I've been using it ever since. This is the best eyelash curler for Asian eyelids. It's just great. It helps hold a curl. And sometimes I will use this eyeshadow brush. It's by Real Techniques and it is the Dome Shadow Brush. I use this to blend in my lipstick, which is kind of weird because it is for the eyes, but I don't really wear that much eyeshadow anyway. And if I do, I tend to blend it out with my fingers. So I use this just to like blend up my lipstick and make sure the edges are seamless. This is another must-have, for sure. It's a makeup sponge, it's by Real Techniques, and this is very similar to the Beauty Blender, but at a fraction of the price. This does come in packs of two, packs of four, and individually, but I would recommend getting it 
and packs of two or four just so you save money. So the last two items I will be showing you are both from the drugstore. They're both face brushes. The first one I will be mentioning is by the brand e.l.f which stands for eyes, lips, face, and it is the complexion brush. I've had this for, I think, almost six and a half years. This is the first makeup brush I purchased, and it still has not shed to this day. The quality's still good. I believe that e.l.f. makeup brushes are really great for the price, and they're worth having in your set, whether you are an amateur or a professional makeup artist. And last but not least, I've got this Colourpop F14 brush. This is a dual fiber brush. I believe you can use this to apply creams or powders onto your face. It really depends on what you like to use. I'm looking forward to applying my bronzer and my powder using this brush because the hairs are very loose. Like this one, it doesn't look compact, but it is quite compact. And this one is loose, so you can do like a side-by-side -side comparison. That's everything I got to show you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that the mini reviews I've done for each product have been helpful. Just a disclaimer, I am not a makeup artist. I'm just someone who loves makeup and beauty in general. I just seem quite knowledgeable about the products I mentioned because I've done research and I really looked into everything before making my purchases. Whatever works for me may not work for you because everyone's skin is different and like we suffer from different breakouts it just so happens that none of these products freak me out so if like let's say the ombre release moisturizer breaks you out or if you have some allergic reaction to a highlighter or the bronzer please take that up with a brand and don't don't lash out at me because i haven't formulated any of these products i'm just a consumer and yeah i that's pretty much all I have to say. I don't really want to sound repetitive, but thank you so much for watching this video again. Please like, yeah, please like my video and subscribe to my channel. I hope to see you guys in my next video. Thank you and bye.